This is the fastest electric scooter I've ridden to date. Today we're checking out the D4 Plus from Nanrobot, a dual motor 2000 watt 34 plus miles per hour e-scooter. I'm Ben from Authentech. Huge thanks to Nanrobot for sponsoring today's video and let's dive right in and check it out. First things first, these electric scooters just keep getting bigger and better and this scooter is a beast. It almost reminds me of a dirt bike with those massive off-roading tires, power, suspension, and speed. This baby flies both on the roads and off-road. What's so incredible with the power and suspension, it feels like anything I throw at it, it just tears through it with ease, almost like nothing's going to slow it down. There's two motors, one in each tire, dual wheel drive, dual brakes, a massive battery pack to power it off, turn on turbo mode, select max speed mode, and she hauls. We're flying at dangerous speeds here, more on that later, but as I often say, my favorite is off-roading and cruising across all terrain. And even when I'm hitting thick grass, going up steep hills, it's carrying me up almost effortlessly, which is so fun. The full suspension system helps to smooth out bumps and jumps, and speaking of, I can finally jump up and over curbs, which is fun, and that tall clearance helps a lot as well. There's even an eco mode, which means if you don't need crazy power and speed for off-roading, but you're looking for far distances, well the scooter should be able to do that too. There's seven key areas I like to focus on with these e-scooter reviews, and that's design, portability, speed, suspension, braking, power, and range. Let's start with the design of the D4 Plus and what comes in the box. When I first unboxed this scooter, I was pretty taken back by how massive this thing is and why I'll keep referring to it as a beast. It's almost hard to convey its size on the screen. There's massive 10 inch tires with wide off-roading tire tread and accompanied with this high strength beefy frame. Lifting it up and out of the box, the weight of the scooter is approximately 60 pounds or 28 kilograms. There's a lot of heavy duty build quality in the scooter, so that's a good thing. As I'll touch on later, the last thing you want is to be flying down roads at crazy fast speeds on top of a wobbly or cheap little scooter. This scooter can easily fold down and be placed in the trunk of your vehicle or wherever, but it is still heavy enough that I probably wouldn't be carrying it up a large flight of stairs or for long distances. So while on that note of portability, this D4 Plus isn't lightweight by any means, but it folds down for that transportation and carrying for short distances is easily possible. And there's a few locking mechanisms that I appreciate. First adjustment, we raise and lower the handlebar stem. There's this fastening buckle to open or close, then three holes for the silver button to lock into place. This is actually a really nice feature to note on because I've had other scooters in the past with only that tightening clasp up top there, but with lots of off-roading and rough terrain, well the stem will slowly slide down with the bumps. To have the secondary system with the locking button at three preset heights, this will help prevent that issue of it sliding down and it'll keep the bars locked in at the height you need. So after sliding the stem down, the handlebars can fold down as well with these little sleeves. Now I wish they screwed into place as they sometimes can become a little loose and wobbly. However, I found if I loosen this screw, will they tighten up a little bit. Lastly, the whole scooter can fold in half and that's another dual locking system which I appreciate. You always want a bit of redundancy of safety mechanisms when possible. First, pull back that red folding bar, then secondly, press down the silver latch to unlock the pin, and then the scooter will fold down. When it folds in half, it locks into place, and then we can lift it. I like to grab the stem, and the rear fender works as a nice handle. A few other design aspects to hit on. The riding deck is ultra wide, which is nice for comfortable riding, plus adds standing stability when I'm flying off-road. Also notice that rear fender is reinforced and structurally solid, which is awesome. I like to place my back foot here for even more stability and a wider stance. There's a front headlight and two rear tail lights. The on off switch is up here on the handlebars. And again, I always like to see these LEDs integrated right into the scooter. Also up here is one of my favorite features. <laughs> This scooter horn means business and it's alerting and very loud and I really like this. Because of this scooter, I'm actually gonna add this to my official criteria for a good safe scooter. That's a loud horn just like this one. The handlebar area looks like serious business and it's just another example. This isn't your cheapy little toy scooter you might have seen on TV. 
There's this key to turn on the voltage. I like having a physical key for security. Then that enables the LCD to power on after the key is turned. The LCD display is bright and shows you your standard speed and odometer, plus hidden settings to tweak and customize, which I like. Hidden on the underside of the LCD display is a USB port for charging your gadgets while on the go. That's a quick overview of the design and portability. Oh, and as always, all the links for more info will be down below. Next onto speed, as I feel like I might be repeating myself, this baby flies at crazy fast speeds. I weigh about 150 pounds and I made sure to fully charge up the scoop before heading out for my speed test. I strapped on my trusty helmet. This one's from Rurock, which makes you feel either invincible or like a bank robber. Either way, kind of bad, eh? This is the part of the show where I quick pause and remind you guys and myself that these are fast speeds. Please wear protection. A wipeout at these speeds and we could lose a limb or possibly die. Not to scare you, but let's have a healthy fear. Okay, so I'm strapped up, turn on the radar gun, make sure we're buzzing with both motors, cranking at full blast, turbo mode on, and as I go flying past, we're able to hit the insanity of 34 miles per hour. And just because a lower thirds conversion to kilometers doesn't do it justice, that's about 55 kilometers an hour. We're talking at nutty speeds here, because let me remind you, this is not a dirt bike or motorcycle, as deceiving as it may look. This is simply an electric scooter with 10 inch wheels. Okay, so top speed of about 34 miles per hour on flat ground, plus a little faster or slower depending on your weight, wind speed, and other variables. So can this baby fly? Well, it sure checks that box for me. I honestly rarely max out that peak speed, but it's nice to have that sort of power under the hood, which is needed for all-terrain riding. Next up, suspension. As I like to say, the suspension is a highly underrated feature of most electric rideables, and it's fantastic to see a dual suspension system here on the D4+. Up front is this quad spring shock system, two shocks on each side, and then in the back is the single adjustable shock. Both 10 inch tires are inflatable, which also helps to absorb some bumps and shocks while riding. And overall, I'd rate the suspension like a solid A minus. I'm flying off road a ton, gravel, dirt, grass. The system seems to help smooth it out a fair bit, but it's not like gliding over a soft cloud either. I've thought about loosening that rear shock and see if it helps smooth it out even more. There's pros and cons to both sides to a soft and firm suspension. I personally like it a bit softer for that off-roading terrain. Also cool, we're able to hit some jumps from small to large and the suspension seems to handle it like a champ. Plus, I can finally hop up curbs with these shocks and this is actually really helpful. I often find myself trying to transition from the street to the sidewalk. And for example, sometimes there's no walk ramps nearby. So my two options are to manually lift the scooter up and over the curb, but that's exercise and we don't want that or like a little Travis Pastrana, I can pop up the front, then the rear wheel to roll over the curb. I've tried doing some bunny hops, and even though they are possible, there's a lot of weight in the scooter, and I'm not ready to bite it face first into the curb just yet. After suspension comes braking. Now I'll have to give this D4 Plus an A plus for the brakes. There's front and rear brakes, two separate brake levers on the handlebars, plus there's electronic or motor braking. Under the settings, we can turn this electronic braking off or up to level two for strongest braking. And in my test, it's very strong motor braking. At fast speeds, these brakes will buck you off if you're not leaning back and ready for it. On the positive note, do lean back and then when you're hitting the brakes, you can stop on a dime. It's like coming in for a short runway landing. Two more key features to cover, power and distance. First, let's talk about the power and torque this baby has. In each wheel, there's a thousand watt motor, so that's 2000 watts of combined power. They say the max load capacity is 330 pounds. On the handlebars, there's two switches, one for eco or turbo mode, and the other is single or dual drive mode. Toggling these switches and you'll feel like a jet fighter. I personally like to leave turbo and dual motor always on. This way I can zip in and out, here then gone in a jiffy. This again is the best way to handle off-roading terrain and even when you're cruising up those steep hills, well the dual motors on this scooter should carry you uphill like a breeze. And last up is distance and battery life. 
inside the D4 Plus is a 52 volt, 24 amp hours lithium battery. Now, despite popular theory that I have a ton of free time on my hands to ride the scooter to the moon and back just to test the maximum battery distance, well, I'm sorry, I wish I could. Besides, there's a lot of variables that change the max distance for every rider, like weight, hills, terrain, and so much more. The two things that I can share, they firstly rate it to go around 34 to 40 miles on a single charge. I know there's some simple math to calculate hypothetical range like total watt hours and the motor wattage, but that's far from real world usage. Secondly, I know in my personal testing of the scooter, I've actually never hit low battery yet. Usually when I've gone out riding, it's on rough terrain, fast speeds, lots of hard acceleration. And let's say I go out for a while, I remember once going at least seven or eight miles on a single trip, and the battery indicators were down just a couple bars. So my rough ballpark estimate would be, at least for myself, riding around, I'd say I could go about 10 to 15 miles on a single charge with hardcore riding. And then I bet if I were to switch into eco mode and single motor drive, well then I should be able to double that about. Maybe go around 20 or 30 miles range. Again, don't hold me to any of those numbers, it's all sort of conjecture, but at least it gives you a rough idea of the mileage and battery distance that I was able to achieve out of the scooter. Overall, I feel like there's a plenty of battery juice that could carry me for a long distance or many hours of riding around. To fully charge that massive battery, you could use a single charger and they say it'll take around 10 to 12 hours. Or if you're in a rush, you could reduce that charging time by half if you were to use two chargers at the same time. Since the scooter supports that, it's nice to have the option. In the box, I received just one charger. Okay, so this beastly off-roading scooter flying at 34 miles per hour, dual motors, dual brakes, dual suspension, a ton of fun to ride. The price on the D4 Plus is currently showing on sale about $13.50. And to put that into context, well that new boosted rev, which is slower, has smaller motors, a lower platform, not even sure if it has a suspension system, which will make for a very bumpy ride, that thing is priced at $1,600 or $250 more. It's very interesting to compare the two. What's also pretty sweet is I'm seeing that the D4 Plus is on Amazon right now as well, so it's nice to have that option. As always, all the links will be down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions or ideas down in the comments. Huge thanks again to Nan Robot, and until next time, let's live authentic.